In this video, I'll be covering the concepts of Redux, why it's needed, and when to use it in your app. To understand why Redux is needed, let's look at a website, an e-commerce website. So as you can see in the screen, there are various components. Definitely, if it's made with React, there are a lot of components in the screen. So this is one component. The menu is one component. This top bar is one component. This view rendered view is one component. And this filter area, filter panel is another component. So when you have a complex app like this, a mobile app, be it a web app or a mobile app, it becomes very hard to communicate between components and to know each other's updated state. So for example, whenever I interact with the slider, the view over here changes. See, it changed immediately. So this component and this component are communicating with each other. Now you might be wondering, hey, they can communicate with each other easily by this props property, right? I mean, they could just, if the parent component is calling the child component, they could just pass properties to each other, right? Well, not to each other. The parent can pass properties to child. Now, this is one way to do it, and it, it works when you have a very simple app, but when you have a very complex app, it becomes very hard to manage the state between multiple components like that and having the updated state all the time. Enter Redux. Now, in the beginning, Redux may seem a bit hard to you. I mean, it seemed a bit hard to me when the first time I got to know about it, but over time, you will know when you're keeping on adding components to your app and your app becomes more complex, you'll, you'll be thankful that something like Redux exists. So let's look at this diagram. Now, there will be four new concepts that you would be introduced to because of Redux, but we'll be using these three, the first three terminologies mostly. And to understand why all of these components are needed in Redux, let's look at scenario or a flow diagram. And this is basically the flow diagram. So a user communicates with your mobile app. I mean, the user is exposed to components, various components in your mobile app. So whenever a change occurs in a mobile app, whenever any sort of user input or some sort of a change and a state change would occur in your components, it would trigger an action creator. An action creator is basically a function that generates a plain JavaScript object called an action, which has a type property and a payload property. The type is basically a command telling what kind of action this stands for. And payload is the data that you would want to update to your state. So the payload, think of it as the new data that you would want to update in your state. So after the action returns this object, this object is handled by the reducers. So the reducers, what it does is it checks what is the action type using the action.type property, and it updates the application state with the payload. Sometimes an action may not have a payload because a payload is an optional property. Suppose you're just giving a command, but you don't need any data associated with it. You did something, you know that it's a, it's a command, but it doesn't necessarily have to have any data associated with it. So that time the payload property is optional. So yeah, so after the reducer checks the action type, it updates the application state and stores it in the store. Now a store is basically a combined data set, a combined state management set. Do you think of it like a database, a database that has all your states. It's a very big JavaScript object and it has all the component states stored in it. So the provider basically distributes all the data, all the state data to all the components in your app. Now what provider does is that it encapsulates the main view component and then through that it distributes data to all the other components. And now all the components have access to each other's state. You don't have to pass down state with, via props or anything. You can just easily access any state object of any component. Now that's a lot to take in, right? Now this might seem like a very complex architecture at the beginning because all of this is theoretical. But once we get down to the coding, you will get very used to the whole terminologies and the flow of how Redux works. And one last thing to add on is that when do we need Redux? I think I mentioned it before, but let me just put it back there again. We need Redux when our app is very complex. So in the Instagram app that we have created, we have just created a very basic app. And you don't really need Redux in that case because we're managing state in just one component. But for the sake of understanding the concept with a very simple app, I'll still implement Redux in that app and show you how it works.